Hello everyone, hope you're having the greatest day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss some facts you need to know about MasterChef if you're a fan. So without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Food tasting. The key element to a lot of reality show success is their use of hyper-dramatization and fake situations or scenarios, which is what makes them so entertaining. Many might not have realized this, but a lot of the dishes that are displayed and eaten on screen are slightly deceiving. Why is that? Well, a little saying that comes to mind when needing to explain this is revenge is best served cold, but what about the food and cooking competitions? According to an interview with the Daily Mail, MasterChef judge George Columbus has some interesting points to bring up. He mentioned that almost in every case by the time the food is ready to be evaluated by the judging panel, it's actually quite cold. Yes, the presentation and editing makes it look like it's been freshly made and rushed to the judges, but most of the time they have to wait 20 to 30 minutes. While the dishes admittedly look mouth-wateringly delicious anyway, they're not nearly as burning hot, which is when they are the most appetizing as they may seem. So this could only mean when you see them take a bite out of the food and seem to be enjoying it, it's more than likely that they're faking their reaction. In order to get a genuine judgment on the dishes, the judges will usually go around to taste the food at the contestant stations around the massive kitchen beforehand. Mentioned in an interview with the Lucky Peach, a judge named Christina Tossi mentioned they do this to get a better understanding of who's doing well versus who is struggling. Behind the scenes, the judges are a lot fairer than they appear on TV, it's just different to the public since it's entertaining when they're harsh. Do you guys think it's unexpected for them to fake their reaction? Cooking classes. It goes without saying, but watching as some of the chefs tear it up in the kitchen, displaying their massive talent can be quite intimidating. You can tell by how skillfully they make use of their ingredients that they know what they're doing, but according to an ex-contestant, it's not always the case. Posted on the Daily Mail, the article discusses how some cast members are given cooking classes when there were challenges that required a level of technique. This is extremely unexpected since there's never any mention of classes given beforehand to contestants. One example they gave when they had to train everyone was for the baking challenges, when they had to make pie crusts and pastry cream. Another whistleblower gave some shocking information that will change the way you see the show as a whole. The insider said, The entire show is not at all how it seems. Each home cook is given professional training before the challenges to ensure that they can cook something decent when they start recording. If you really look back though, it's not too surprising because certain things about the chefs don't really add up. Like how in many cases there will be a contestant that will mention that they've never cooked with a specific ingredient or done the required recipe, but still manage to do it anyway. It's not realistic for every single one of these chefs to be able to pull it off despite never doing it beforehand. A producer on the show claimed that they never made the guidance a secret, but it's something we never knew. Animal Cruelty You should know by now that the meat industry is a cruel and cold-blooded place that people would rather just ignore. It's safe to say that no one tunes into a show like Master Chef to get a chance to see the slaughter of animals on live television. But something you might not be aware of is that Master Chef has shown their contestants performing cruel acts and on several occasions actually. Like one chef who was a practicing Hindu was forced into ending the life of a crab to make a dish for the judges. Gordon Ramsay at least offered to be the one to do it for him, but the vegetarian cook felt pressured into doing it himself. This was super uncomfortable to watch but has since been taken down because of the backlash it received. In a 2013 episode, one of the ingredients the contestants needed to cook were two live birds which they would have to incorporate into a dish. Thankfully, this time they weren't going to need to slaughter them themselves, it was done off screen, but why they didn't just do it in advance is very unsettling. However, it gets even worse when we look at the 2014 episode that sparked a ton of outrage online. Vietnam's master chef displayed a man ending a turtle's life on air with little to no censoring, which was incredibly disturbing. Worst of all, the man was beating it to death with a wooden spoon and then beheaded it, which made other contestants really distraught. While there was a lot of outrage online, some MasterChef shows were interrupted by vegan protesters holding signs reading, I'm not an ingredient, I am someone. Non-disclosure agreement. One of the biggest reasons why certain shows have kept juicy, behind-the-scenes secrets in the shadows is because they make people sign an NDA. Non-disclosure agreements force the people who sign into not leaking confidential information to the public. Although, when it comes to the dirtiest details about MasterChef, there isn't really much out there for you to find because of these NDAs. Like we've mentioned, there are only a few people on the show who have leaked some major information, and that's simply because of the strict non-disclosure agreements. However, there is one ex-contestant who slipped through the cracks and managed to not sign an agreement. This exception, named Jesse Glenn, appeared on the show in Season 3 and was the only rare case that never signed this document. When they initially handed her the contract, she had so many questions that she never ended up signing it and the recruiters forgot about it. 
So as a consequence of this, she had attracted a lot of attention from the media since she was able to legally leak information without any repercussions. Glenn talked about the personality tests, exit interviews, and questions asked by producers, like which judge's approval would mean the most to you so they can plan which direction the show will go in. She claims that most of what you see on your screen happens because of what the contestants answer in their interviews, implying that things are really scripted. The whole process was even dubbed to be sadistic prying by Glenn, which is very telling as to how these interviews go. Apparently, she even expressed that she and many other contestants felt depressed and hurt after being on the show since it was a rough experience. No guarantee. For the MasterChef US contestants, it seems like when the producers invite you over to LA, you're pretty much guaranteed a spot on the show. However, as some contestants have pointed out in interviews, being invited over to Los Angeles doesn't mean you're accepted at all. One woman named Elise Mayfield, who was in the fifth season of the show, told AV Club that she didn't hear back from the producers for four months until they invited her to LA. Mayfield was told that she would only have 10 days to make preparations to potentially stay in the state for a couple of months. Don't you think that's a little ridiculous to burden someone with such a huge amount of planning like that in such a short amount of time? Anyway, she found out that it wasn't even an invite to the show, but rather a final audition to see if she was worthy of being casted. When she got there, everyone invited ended up being in the same hotel together, but she found that most were friendly, so at least that was a positive. As the time came to compete in the audition, as people cooked and interacted with producers, 70 people were cut suddenly and without any warning. That's absolutely insane to hear. But what's more, Glenn has some more fascinating behind the scenes info to reveal when she was interviewed by Salon. She discusses how potential contestants had to pay their own way to LA and their stay at the hotel, which is incredibly expensive. After all this, they had to not only cook under immense pressure of randomly being cut, but take two-hour personality tests. These are supposedly used by producers so they can obtain the correct angle to craft personalities and storylines during the show. They also make sure that there's no criminal history attached to their potential since it would tarnish the MasterChef brand. Glenn feels the tests were very invasive. Criminal Judge We all know by now that Gordon Ramsay is infamous for his angry outbursts, but he's really not the only MasterChef judge with a temper. George Galambris, an Australian judge, was charged with assault after shoving a 19-year-old football fan at a match in Sydney in late 2017. BBC informed the public about how Galambris issued an apology shortly after the altercation, which he said was instigated by the 19-year-old who was making abusive comments about his family. Additionally, Galambris' businesses were being investigated for something that could potentially put him in jail for a long time. Allegedly, his restaurants were being looked into for a problem with their payroll system, which led to the underpaying of his employees. In fact, a total of 162 of his restaurant employees were being underpaid, missing 2.6 million of their pays collectively. Well, that will sadly be all for today's video here on the channel. I really do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this, and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.